welcome to Exhibition. And hello, Lucy Cullerton. Hello, Richard. Great to see you again. Um, and actually, we should say that you are in a room on your property at the moment with four, or is it five dogs and one goat? Yeah, five dogs and a goat. There's two dogs not in the room. <laughs> So just in case there's you know, a little bit of barking or a little bit of bleating, then uh, then we'll know why. Yeah, or a, or a major kerfuffle. That's what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> now your exhibition is "Stay Warm, Be Cool" at Jan Murphy Gallery in Brisbane. Um, yes. And just before we start talking about the exhibition, first of all, I should congratulate you uh, about a, a great double header. You are a finalist at the Art Gallery of New South Wales in the Archibald Prize, the Portrait Prize, yes. and also a finalist in the Wynn Prize, the Landscape mm -hmm. Prize. Yes. So, fantastic achievement. And my, my subject, Charlie Maslin, is, is a local, he's a farmer, and he's a good farmer, he's a regenerative farmer, doing souls for life. And the painting in the Wynn Prize is his property also, so it's lovely, they're both together. It's ah. really fortunate. Fantastic. Well, uh, this exhibition, which, as I say, is called Stay Warm, Be Cool, uh, many of the, uh, of the objects, the still life um, component of the exhibition, uh, many of those objects were painted during your winter uh, down there at Bibb and Luke, uh, just inland from the south coast of New South Wales. A and it was, I mean, it gets very cold at your place, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> so some of the things that we see in the exhibition are... Um, are electric radiators. Um, and, well, actually, the fans we see are not switched on. You didn't need those. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I could actually paint a fan spinning. That would be, that's someone else's job. That's a, a challenge. <laughs> no, I didn't need the, <laughs> yeah, a different challenge. And I certainly didn't need the fans on while I was painting them. That's true. Yeah. But the, uh, the radiators have a fantastic glow about them. But before we focus on too much in the way of individual works. Give us a sense, yeah. if you can, of how it is that you choose what it is that you're going to paint. Uh, how did right. you choose those objects? Yeah, that this little collection of works sort of morphed out of, I had been painting my flowers in bowls and I, they're very popular, they sell well, they lovely to paint flowers out of my garden. Then I started painting the bottles just as a vessel um, and the bottles then got bored of the bottles <laughs> um, moved on to a collection of cans I had tin cans and I thought oh, I might just paint vessels I thought of painting vases without flowers and, can and and my empty cans and these kind of things and then when I started painting my cans I painted I also have a collection of old can openers I painted my can openers and it just moved, morphed into utilitarian objects. It, then I looked at my radiator, I thought, oh, I might paint you. And I dropped my vessel thing almost completely and started, you know, looking around for other sort of stuff. So these, these lovely radiators, uh, and indeed fans as well, they're, mm. they're yours? They're just ones that you have around the house, around the property? Uh, yeah, or I borrowed. I borrowed a couple actually that I've uh, that I sort of scouted at friends' houses. Mm. Yeah, so had a couple and read a couple. When you see something like uh, these objects, what what sort of qualities are you looking for? What makes you go, oh, that is just going to be great to paint? A bit ordinary and kind of beautiful at the same time. <laughs> sort of something plain Jane, but you can see something in it that's gonna be a bit more exciting as a painted object. There certainly seems, uh, with those radiators and the fans, there oh, seems a lovely mm -hmm. sense of nostalgia, of a very fond nostalgia for the objects, the forms, the aesthetics perhaps of decades ago. Is that a, a conscious yeah. thing or did that just happen accidentally? Oh, well, yeah, they are older. I didn't paint a modern fan, but then I don't have a modern fan. And the toaster in the exhibition is actually um, my toaster out of the kitchen. So when I when I very first came to Biv and Luke, um, um, the toaster was here and I, in the cupboard and, I, and I've been using it ever since. And um, it's terrific. So, yeah. And the fans, uh, 
just they've just hung around they're 50 years old plus like me <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, the toaster if um, people look carefully at the painting of the electrical cord connection it actually looks a bit frightening we we, we hope you're being careful with it yeah i don't touch that part i <laughs> you know it still works <laughs> Again, going to the broader, uh, the broader approach that you take, where is the intersection for you between your interest in an object that you see and you think, oh, that's, a, that's an interesting object, yeah. and your sense of actually wanting to paint that object, uh, enjoying the painting process? What, what are the things that, you know, where do, where do those things meet? Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah. When I started painting my objects, I'm inundated. People say, oh, you could paint my this or my that, like mix masters. But a mix master with all those, the beautiful colours, they come in great colours and the bowls are beautiful, but they're already beautiful. And I don't want to paint that because it's sort of a piece of art in itself already. So for a start, I like the ordinary. I also like painting things that are connected to me. So the objects that I have painted that I've borrowed have come from close friends. They haven't come from, I don't go out and hire them or buy them. I already have them or know of them. So that's sort of important to me too. So I'm really just looking for something a bit tarnished because I love painting a bit of rust or a bit of dirt on, on an object rather than so clean. Um, I, I, it is hard once you're sort of handling them the fans and you go, oh no, I've, I've just wiped half the dirt off that. And I have to, yeah, I have to sort of sometimes make up the dirt or dust it off with some bit of dust. Yeah, it's good. You say uh, that you are often attracted to the ordinary, but sometimes mm -hmm. you seem to paint the extraordinary or at least the unexpected. And I'm thinking here about, right. about the drench guns. I doubt very much. Oh, right. okay. I doubt very much that many people would expect to see a drench gun on an art gallery wall. No, no, that's true. that's true. Okay, they came from my good. They came from my Archibald subject, Charlie Maslin, who, um, yeah. So he's a sheep farmer, and the drench guns are out of his shed. And when I was painting his portrait, he saw the other objects, the cans and things that I'd been painting. And he said, oh, what about, what about these? And he brought the box in and they were so beautiful. How could I say no? All brass and, and stay, you know, lovely old tarnished metals. And they, yeah, they're fantastic. They could be anything. You mentioned the drench guns in a box. And that means there would have been a number of them. And one of the things that seems to be a characteristic of, of many of your paintings over the years is that they have quite yeah. large numbers of the same or similar objects and you and you paint large groups of them what what's the attraction there yeah yeah repetition pattern uh just taking it a little bit further uh, and usually it's because i have lots like when i painted my stuff when i painted wheel casters or auto like lots, <laughs> I had boxes of them and I had to paint lots. <laughs> Seashells, lots. <laughs> and that repetition, yeah, it's kind of nice start in one corner and keep going up. When I went to Japan, uh, it's a painting I had in a Sulman Prize years ago. I painted rice crackers, really cute little Japanese <laughs> rice crackers from the Rita Airport. I painted hundreds of them. So, you know, just things that catch my eye and they look, you know, look like they need showing off. I've, I've been fortunate on a couple of occasions to have been able to, to watch you while you're painting uh, something. Yeah. And one of the things that is, uh, seems very clear is that you look so carefully at that particular object uh, and you seem to paint it very particularly. It's not a generic object, it's that object. Can, can you tell us about what yeah, that's you, right. what, no, how yeah. you look? Right, yes. Yeah, I look at every single object as a new object, even if I'm repeating an object, because everything about it is the colours different, the forms slightly different, and I don't like the same thing to be repeated over and over again. It, it has to be an individual thing in amongst a group of things. Yeah. And it's like if I'm painting a landscape, every time I mix a sky, the blue's different. 
you got to look at this. You don't just mix sky blue on your palette. You actually look at what colour the sky is. And that's so important to me. It's got to be the right colour. It's got to, it's got to look like, you've got to recognise which, <laughs> yeah, which drenched gun it is in the box. And as well as painting multiple objects, often you seem, uh, once you've focused your attention on a particular type of object, you seem to paint that object or a group of those objects multiple times. Um, in this mm -hmm. exhibition, there are a number of paintings of, um, of, of open rusty cans, either very numerous or just a small group. Um, yeah. and, and the same applies to some of the other objects. Um, again, how are you thinking when you are deciding, oh yes, I'll paint another fan. What's the motivation? Right, because I because I had another one, and they all sort of talk to each other, and, and one leads to the next one. You know, I paint a fan, and I feel like I need to do another fan. It's like my tins. So they they took, and the tins were really hard because they're all ellipses, and I paint each tin at a time, so I have to get each ellipse to match the one before, and then paint it individually. The cans took a long time. And the cans came from, the cans were a neighbour who, um, an old fellow who, who, actually, who died and he just, he just ate all his food out of cans and it was an enormous pile of cans at his place. And um, I took a bag, a feed bag full of them. I wish I'd taken the whole pile. Mm -hmm. That, that sense of particularity that we've been talking about, looking so closely at objects and, and exploring them in groups or, or re repetitively, repeatedly, I should say, is that something that um, came into your consciousness a long time ago from art school or from particular influences or from a particular mentor or how has that evolved, that way of looking? When I was a kid and I drew horses, I drew many. <laughs> um, when I drew my mice, I drew many. I, I, if I drew jewels, I drew many. I don't know, I've always, um, yeah, had, had a bit of a pattern going and repeating like that. And, and I also, when I was at art school, painted my, uh, all my horse paintings and I used my plastic horses from when I was a kid and I'd set a light up on them and I'd paint multiple horses. So I, I, I just got, it just works for me. I like the shapes between them. I like the negative space and that um, then there's not so much emphasis on the one object, I guess. It sort of shares the interest. Mm. We'll come to um, some of the landscape works in the exhibition uh, shortly, but just before we do, can you give us a little bit of a sense of your landscape? Uh, you, you are on a, a property um, on, on some acres uh, and mm -hmm. in the past you have painted, for example, all the sheep on your property and various other um, animals. Give us a sense of, of the place that you live and, and what your routine with your, uh, with your uh, what's the word, the animals in your care is. Right, okay, yeah. Okay, so I'm on 60 acres and I've got, a big garden, an old garden around here. And then I've got a rescue animals. My other interest, I, I could show you. Oh. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> um, I love a potty. I love nurturing. I never had kids, so I don't know what, this is Claire, my current baby, who's a goat. Um, and I got her recently um, visiting friends and she was a potty. Yeah, anyway, I took her home. So, um, um, yeah, so very, there's- was very pleased to be with you. <laughs> yeah, I just woke her up, are you okay? You yeah, know, she likes a cuddle, she's right. <laughs> and um, yeah, so there's lots of, um, that I've got, I think there's 49 sheep and most of them were potties that I've raised. Claire's my first goat that I've raised, which is, yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna have 59 goats now. Um, then there's um, a couple of cows and then there's some horses. There's my dog pack around me. Um, they're all rescue dogs. And then what's my life? <laughs> and then I paint, <laughs> you know, my work is really important to me and I've got a very strict routine. And I, yeah, I start painting at nine and I work till lunch, have some lunch and then either go back to the studio for a few more hours or if, 
right, like right now, I'm in, you know, I'm having a show at Jan's. I'm a bit more relaxed about deadlines for paintings. I'll go and do some gardening. So that is pretty much my routine every day. <laughs> and then in the in the evenings, the sort of late afternoon feeds that happens and mm. putting everyone away, putting the chooks and the ducks and the geese away and pigeons. <laughs> Let's turn to the, the landscape works in the exhibition now. Uh, and first of all, give us a feeling of, of when, again, you're deciding to paint a particular landscape. Mm -hmm. What are you looking for and how do you make the decision? Yeah, well, my place, I'm in a valley and I'm under a hill. So where I actually live, there's no big views. And I love, my favourite place is probably the interior. I love the Kimberley, the McDonnell Ranges. That sort of, it's my favourite country when I'm actually out and about to paint. So the Monero, which is just outside, a little bit further around me, on the hills around me, is, is much more desolate and open. And uh, I love painting it. I love the colour, especially after this dry spell we've had. The colours have just been so intense and, and the rocks, everything's exposed. Rocks and dirt and, and a bit of scrubby grass. Well, let's have a look at uh, a work which pretty specifically references that uh, called Monero yeah. Grasses. Uh, and you, you have that sense of openness, of perhaps dryness, but give us a sense of what, you, of what you're seeing in that landscape. Right. Well, I'm looking at two different properties. <laughs> and um, one, <laughs> one has a good ground cover and the other is, you know, has had more grazing. So the grasses are uh, dictated by the fence lines and that's, that was what I was looking at. And... Um, yeah, the colours, just looking at the colours. But it sounds also as though there's a, a very much an environmental sensitivity or awareness in, cool. in looking <laughs> at how the landscape yeah. has ended up in front of you. Yeah, no, I guess so. But I'm not trying to, you know, yell and scream about that. Mm. <laughs> it's certainly there. It's there. <laughs> Good <laughs> farmer, bad farmer. <laughs> 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 Let's have another uh, look at the Monero view. In fact, this time it's Monero view of Delegate Hill. Uh, again, yeah. describe to us what you're seeing through your eyes. Right. That Well, that is looking out into that lovely treeless open space, but looking down a gully with old ribbony gums and snow gums and all the rocks that are all exposed just look fantastic because it's all been... Uh, no grass because of the drought. Um, yeah, lots and lots of, yeah, little granite rocks. <laughs> How do you work with uh, landscape paintings? Is there usually a plan air study first? Yes, yeah, yeah. And in fact, the two little studies are in the exhibition also, I think. Yeah, so I go out and um, the, um, yeah, uh, that, the looking across the delicate hill was I was painting with a friend of mine, Lily, and we just went out for an afternoon's yeah, lunch and a paint, and sat down and I and the study was quite successful, so I came back and made the bigger painting. When you come back and make a bigger painting, what sort of changes do you tend to make? And perhaps what sort of things are, are you trying to resolve in those larger works? Yeah. Yeah, um, there were, I get my colour and I get my composition from my study, my painting study. And I also take a couple of photos while I'm there because the photos have a bit more detail than my study. So it was actually a really cold, windy, quite a horrible day. So we were painting as quickly as we could to get out of there. So um, the camera certainly helped with filling in a few more things. I also, um, um, had photographed an old tree, a dead tree, which was further up behind where we were painting. So I painted that in just for a little bit more interest, I guess, um, which, yeah, just to add, my study didn't have the dead tree. So sometimes I, I can add to that. Let's wrap up now with uh, a final image. And I wanted to finish with the, uh, the work Suitcase. Um, Yes. Oh, the drench guns came in a suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, is that the suitcase that the drench guns came in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And here was me thinking that it was a suitcase full of, you know, nostalgia and emotion and travel and so on. In fact, it was just, it was the container for yeah. the trash guns. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's it. And I liked the lining. It had that cute lining. Someone had gone to all that trouble. So, yeah, painted that. Well, that is a, a, a lovely image uh, on which to conclude. So, Lucy Cullen, thanks so much for sharing your exhibition with us. Is Richard, that's great. Thank you. All right, bye. <laughs>